so according to Statistics Canada, pandemic-related lifestyle changes like increased sedentary behavior is leading to higher rates of obesity across the country. Our next guest says one of the consequences of this trend is an increase in insulin resistance. So here to tell us more is registered dietitian and nutritionist Nishta Siksana. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Such an important conversation. Yes. So let's just start with the very basic thing, yes. which is what is yes. insulin resistance? Yes, so insulin resistance is a condition. Mm -hmm. And just as it sort of sounds, it is a condition where the hormone insulin we produce in our body, mm -hmm. our tissues become resistant to it. Okay. So insulin's role is typically to take the glucose from the food we eat and digestion in the bloodstream, mm -hmm. bring it into our muscle cells and our brain cells. And when we develop an insulin resistance, mm -hmm. it means those tissues, they're no longer receiving that message from the insulin we make, mm -hmm. and so we're resistant to insulin's function. And what causes our bodies to resist it? Well, it is kind of a multifactorial thing. So one of the major causes is really this too much energy, the consumption of too much energy and growth of fat cells. And I'm not talking about too much broccoli. Yeah. Right? We're yeah, talking right. about the increase in ultra processed and processed food in the Canadian diet up to about 52% now. Wow. So that is definitely a factor that has a huge impact. And then movement, you know, through the past few years, people have become more and more sedentary. And I don't just mean not going to the gym. I actually mean movement through your day. You know, we need to be, have non-sedentary time during our day as well as exercise at the gym. And then things like hormones, a big factor, especially for women, not just any age of women, young women that may be struggling with PCOS, as well as women going through perimenopause and menopause, our estrogen, as it changes, that has an impact on insulin sensitivity because we need estrogen to keep cells sensitive to insulin. Other factors, unfortunately, are genetics. So we do see in certain ethnic populations, South, Central Asian populations, West Indian, Caribbean, African, tend to be much more likely to be insulin resistant. And then finally, if you have other conditions or taking medications, those can be risk factors. And then just age, aging, yeah. you know, as we age, we tend to become less sensitive to our insulin. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about this because what it sounds like is glucose, which is the energy we're taking in in the food, right? Yes. It's like our insulin, it just can't keep up with all of that, especially with ultra processed foods and we become resistant. So like, is glucose, is the energy the problem? Is that bad for us? It's a really great question. So no, glucose itself as a molecule is not bad for us. That is our brain and our body's desired energy source. We want that as our preferred energy source to help our heart and our brain function, to help our muscles work. The problem happens when you're having excessive amounts of energy and you're getting glucose flooding into the body, you're asking your body to produce more and more insulin. And so then over time, you know, the glucose isn't really getting where it needs to go because we're, it's getting too, we're getting too much. And then that insulin is not able to work as efficiently and as effectively. So the answer is really not that glucose or sugar or even carbohydrates like from food mm -hmm. that cause insulin resistance. It's really the totality of the amount of what you're eating, how it impacts our metabolism and then that lack of movement. That was a really good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. so uh, I, what can happen when there's excessive glucose? Well, excessive glucose we don't want because our bloodstream, when we have glucose in our bloodstream, that's not where we want it. We want it to be there for a short period of time, you know, to help us do an activity, to help mm -hmm. us think, etc. But if it sits around there, it actually damages our tissues and our nerves. So when it hangs around in our bloodstream, that's really what's causing all of those micro and macrovascular damages that we definitely don't want in the body. Okay, so can, can anything be done to actually reverse insulin resistance or actually prevent it? Yes, 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 absolutely. So one of the main things you want to think about is building muscle. Muscle tissue, lean muscle tissue, is actually something that sensitizes our body to insulin and it helps our body get glucose where it needs to go. So you wanna have resistance training in your program and you wanna make sure that your focus of movement includes building up that muscle tissue, activating it as much as possible. And then movement in general. We're not just talking about exercise at a, at a gym per se. Move through your day. Right. Okay. You have to, you know, fidget, move around, get up, even things like little exercise snacks. These are things like taking the stairs up and down, um, doing body weight squats, uh, or calf raises can actually really help pull glucose in, keep the body sensitive to insulin. And then of course, food quality and food quantity. So we really do want to think about what are you actually eating? Again, back to that ultra processed, processed refined carbohydrates. Those are really not going to be benefiting you in terms of reducing your risk. Mm -hmm. You want high quality carbohydrates, whole fruits, 
whole vegetables, beans, et cetera, and you wanna make sure that you're not also consuming too much. A lot of people don't like to do this, mm -hmm. but you may actually need to track what you're eating just for a few days, even in a month, mm -hmm. to, to, to take a look at your portions um, because people are often eating much more than they think they are. And then finally, recovery. So many people don't prioritize recovery, recovering our nervous system, sleep, rest. These are huge pieces that can help with preventing insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. All right, I know. Thinking about it's everything good. in my daily life, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm eating too much. All right, so at <laughs> what point does insulin resistance become diabetes? Yeah. Well, it does have a turning point, and you're going to know what that is by going to the doctor and getting a blood test. Mm -hmm. So you do need a doctor to assess this for you and understand if you've gone from insulin resistance to pre-diabetes mm. or into actual type 2 diabetes. That's, that requires a visit to the doctor. But I do want you to understand, even if you have pre-diabetes, you can actually reverse that, okay? You can change your habits and reverse that. Even if you have type 2 diabetes, you can do so much that will help your blood sugars and your health, so don't give up. Sorry, can I just jump in quickly? and yes. I, and. There's insulin resistance, prediabetes, yes. and diabetes. Yes. What is the difference with all of those? Well, it is based on an actual marker in our blood, and it's based on a certain level that that marker okay. sits, it sits at. It's called hemoglobin A1C. So prediabetes is before we sort of get into the diagnosis saying you have type 2 diabetes, you have a disease and a condition uh, that you know we have to now manage, mm -hmm. and sometimes we're managing that in different ways. If you have insulin resistance that's trending towards prediabetes, there's a lot of lifestyle and primary prevention you can do to help push yourself back into the normal range. So it's a great alert before yes. you can get My mom worse. Did that. She yes. pushed herself back into the. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, what are some signs that it, some signs that we should seek medical advice? Well, I would say, generally speaking, you want to be aware, the first thing you need to do is be aware of your own habits. You know, what are you actually doing in your own life? Are you sleeping well? What are you eating? What is your diet like? You know, what are your own daily habits and patterns? Because typically healthy people, we don't do sort of like an annual doctor visit anymore where we yeah. do a workup. Mm. That's not really what we need to do when, when we're dealing with healthy people. Some people do need blood work at regular intervals through the year, and then that's going to be a great way to right. assess. But of course, if you're having symptoms, things like you notice some um, dark patches on your skin starting to show, fatty deposits, even symptoms like excessive thirst, uh, weakness, fatigue, a poor recovery from either exertion or some type of an illness, these are all signs that you definitely want to visit the doctor. Okay. Fascinating Jeez, information. Great. Uh, great way to start the year with this great <laughs> yeah. information. Nisha, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. That's amazing. It's true.